In this video, we're going to be exploring how to recreate the Fluent 2 accordion control in Power Apps as a reusable component. This is a continuation of a previous video where we built the Fluent 2 card component. We'll be using the modern controls in Power Apps to build this component. We'll start by looking at Microsoft's documentation on the Fluent 2 accordion. This is a React control which allows us to show information in a compact way. The user can then toggle whether or not the content is expanded or collapsed. If we look further at the documentation, we'll see that we can define whether only one panel is open at a time. We can define which panels are open by default. We can set custom expand icons, and our heading text can also include a custom icon. This is all functionality that we will build into our component. We'll first head to our components and we'll add a new component named Fluent2 Accordion. Inside of the component, we'll add a vertical container named Container Component. This will house our actual controls later. We'll also set this component container's X and Y values to zero, then the width to parent.width and the height to parent.height. We'll go ahead and set the drop shadow to none and the border radius to zero as well. Before we insert any controls into our component, let's first set up some custom properties for our component. The first property will be called items and we'll set this as a data input of type table. For this one, we want to check the box to trigger the on reset behavior when the value changes. This will be the property where we put the actual items that will appear in our accordion. Next, we'll add a property for multiple open. This will be an input Boolean and we'll tell our accordion if we want to allow multiple items to be opened at a time, or if only one item should be allowed to be open. Lastly, we'll add a property called expand icon. This will be a data input of type record and will display the expand and collapse icons for each of our accordion items. Let's go ahead and set some default values for these properties. For our items property, we'll create a table and insert a single item into it. We'll populate this with fields for the heading, the content, icon, item expanded, and item disabled. These will be some of the parameters that we can modify depending on the item that we want to show in our accordion. For multiple open, we'll leave this at true for now. And for the expand icon, we'll set this as a single record with an expand and a collapse property. This is where we would put the name of our fluent icons that we want to appear as the expand and collapse buttons for our accordion. For expand, we'll use chevron right, and for collapse, we'll use chevron down. We're going to now head to the on reset property of our component. In this reset property, we'll insert a clear collect function to create a collection called call items. We want the value of this collection to be self.items, which is where we specify our accordion items in our component. We use a collection instead of directly using the items property of our component because we'll be changing the values inside of the items table on the fly to track whether each accordion item is expanded or collapsed. And we wouldn't be able to modify these values unless they were in a collection. Now that we've created our on reset behavior, we'll add a new button temporarily. And in the on select function of this button, we'll insert reset parent. This is going to populate our collection of items initially. After we click this button, we can see our collection has been populated and we can go ahead and delete this button. Next, we'll start to insert our controls. Inside our component container, we'll insert a flexible height gallery named Gal Accordion. The data source for this gallery will be Call Items, which houses all the data that we specify in our items property when we insert this component onto a screen. We'll set the layout to blank and the container alignment to stretch with a minimum width of zero. We also want to set the template padding for this gallery to zero. 
Inside our gallery, we'll insert a vertical container called Container Accordion Controls. This container will hold the controls for our accordion component. We'll go ahead and set the X and Y values as zero. The width for this container will be parent.template width. We'll leave the height for now, as this will be dynamic later, but we'll go ahead and change the drop shadow to none. Next, inside our accordion controls container, we'll insert a horizontal container named container heading. We'll set the height to 32 and the drop shadow as none. And in this case, we also want to vertically align the controls inside this container to the center. In addition, we'll set the layout gap to eight. Inside our header container, we'll go ahead and insert a button control for button expand. This is our expand button that will allow the user to expand or collapse the accordion. We'll set the layout property to icon only and the height and width to 24. The button's type is going to be transparent and for our button's icon, we want this to be dependent on whether the accordion item is open or closed. We'll create an if function in our icon property that states if this item dot expanded is true, then we want to show our collapse icon, which is fluent to accordion dot expand icon dot collapse. If this is false, then we want to show the actual expand icon, which is fluent to accordion dot expand icon dot expand. Next, we'll add an icon control and a text control named icon heading and label heading. For our icon control, we want the icon to point to this item dot icon. For the visible property, we want to make it so that if the icon of this item is blank, that the icon is not visible. Otherwise, it would display a blank circle if there was no icon for this gallery item. We'll use the formula is not blank this item dot icon to make this happen. For the icon's height and width, we'll set this to 20. And then for the color, we'll choose this dark gray color. Now for our heading label, we'll select the text property and we'll set the text of this control to this item dot heading. We'll disable the wrap feature and we'll turn on flexible width. Now that our heading controls are done, we'll select our accordion controls container and we'll insert a vertical container called container content. This container will contain text or images or controls that you want to include for each of your accordion items. In this case, we'll just go ahead and insert a text label called label content. We'll set the text of this label to this item dot content, and we'll enable a couple different options on this control for wrap and auto height. And we'll also set the container alignment to stretch. We'll select our content container again, and we'll disable flexible height. In the height property of this container, we want to enter the Y property and the height property of the last control in this container added together. Since this is only going to have one text control, we'll set this to label content dot height plus label content dot Y. This will make our content container's height automatically expand to the height of our text label. If we had other controls in this container, like an image control or some text inputs, and the label was not the last item in the container, we'd want to change this to reference whatever the bottom item in this container is. That would ensure that the container's height expands to the full height of the content within. We'll also go ahead and disable the drop shadow for this container. We can now select our accordion controls container and we'll make its height dynamic as well. We'll set the height property as our content containers height plus its Y property. To make our content container disappear when the panel is closed, we'll set the visible property of our content container to this item dot item expanded. If this is true, the container will show. And if it is false, you'll only see the header container. Now we need to create the behavior to expand our items when the expand button is clicked. 
We'll go to our on select property of our expand button and we'll insert a patch function where we patch our items collection. We want to patch this item, which is the currently selected item for this button, and we'll patch the item expanded column to the opposite of this item dot expanded. The exclamation mark will say if the item expanded property is true, then make it false. If it is false, then make it true. We also want to take into account our multiple open component property. In the Fluent UI documentation, the accordion can either allow multiple items to be open, or it can force there to be only one item open at a time. We are controlling this with the multiple open property in our component. Before our patch formula, we'll insert an if formula to say, if the multiple open property is true, then do nothing. But if it is false, then we want to use the update if function to update all the items in our collection where item expanded equals true, and the heading does not equal the currently selected items heading. We want to set these item expanded fields to false. This will make it so that if multiple open is set to false on the screen that we insert the control on, when we click an accordion item, it's gonna close any other open accordion items. Next, we'll go ahead and make our gallery's height automatically adjust to the height of our accordion items. I've showcased this in previous videos, so I won't spend too much time on it, but you can click the link in the top right corner to see a dedicated video on this. We'll insert a text control in the root of our gallery called label auto height. The text property of this control will be set to the height of our accordion controls container. Now for our gallery's height property, we'll set this to the sum of self.all items, and we want to sum label auto height.text. This will sum the height of all of our gallery item containers so that the gallery's height automatically adjusts to them. We'll also add eight to this value just for some extra padding. Once we've done this, we'll go to our component and we'll create a new custom property called auto height. This will be a data output of type number. The value of this property is going to be set to our accordion gallery's height. Now we can set the height property of our component to self.auto height. Now the preview of our control doesn't look like much here, but we'll go ahead and insert it on a screen so we can see the end result. Selecting our control, we can go to our items property we'll just copy this first item to insert some new items. As you can see, we have three headings, and I've removed the icons for each of these so that this accordion only shows text. If I click on one of the drop-down menus, we can see it displays Content 1, Content 2, and Content 3. We do have the multiple open option enabled on our component, so I can disable this and close some of our items. Now if I open one, content one is displayed. If I open another heading, we can see that only content two is displayed, and the other heading was closed. You can see in our items property, we have a field for item disabled. So if that is set to true, we want the behavior to be that the person cannot expand this accordion item. To make that happen, we'll go to our component and we'll select our expand button. For the display mode of our button, we'll say if this item is disabled, then set the display mode to disabled. And if not, set the display mode to edit. Now, if I change heading one to true for item disabled, we can see that we cannot expand the item. Just as another example here, I've created a new screen for new hire instructions. So I inserted two text labels as well as two copies of our Fluent2 accordion. The items property of these are filled out with a heading and content, and I gave each item in the first component an icon. 
in the second accordion, we can see that neither of these have icons included. So it's just text for the heading. If we play our app, we can try clicking on one of these items and we can see that the information is displayed for each accordion item. If I go back and select our component, I can turn off the multiple open option and I'll also change our expand icon. So we'll say to expand the accordion, we'll have a plus symbol or the add icon and to collapse it, we'll have the dismiss icon. If we play our app again, now we can see we have a plus button and when we expand the item, now we have a cancel button. Since multiple open is disabled, if I select another accordion item, the first one closes. And that's about it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I hope these recent videos on the Fluent UI components have been useful. And if you have any controls that you'd like to see created as components in the future, please let me know in the comments below. Have a great day.